Let me continue here on this agenda. There is no getting around the need to stop chain migration, birthright citizenship, amnesty, and bilingualism, all of which contribute to the balkanization of our society. We've seen it in our schools. We've seen it in voting patterns. We've seen it in the streets. And if we don't have respect for our own society, people coming here won't either. It undermines allegiance to the country. And it's destructive of our culture. Legal, managed immigration, yes. The rest, no. No. Now these are the hard things that have to be done among others. I sure as hell hope we didn't elect a bunch of people to go to Washington to worry about what this commission is proposing or to worry about Nancy Pelosi objecting to anything, or to worry about meeting Obama halfway, unless, of course, halfway is toward liberty and repealing what he's done to the nation. What else can the American people do but throw their asses out in a massive vote of opposition to what's going on? And we're going to do it again in two years. Clean up the slop that's left. That's right, the slop. Well, you know, we can't repeal Obamacare as long as Obama's there. Okay, that's what we have elections for. But to put somebody in who will. Destroy it. Destroy it before it destroys us. Now, I want to make very clear my position on Social Security and Medicare. I've only said it a thousand times, but you should see the idiot emails I get. The problem with Social Security is that it creates reliance on a program that cannot work in the long run. There are not enough young people to work to pay for those who are retired. There just aren't. And like everything else the politicians touch, they took a program that was narrowly defined, and blew it up to cover all kinds of situations and all kinds of individuals that were never initially intended to be covered. It's not simply a pension program anymore. It's 50 programs in one. So how do we get out of this without hurting people? How do we get out of this without hurting people who rely on it? Well, there's only one way. It's not by massively raising taxes and sending them to the general revenue at the Treasury Department. It's not by putting off retirement ages for 40 or 50 or 70 years. Who the hell knows what's going to happen then? That's putting the decision off. It's by making sure those who currently are on the program are taken care of. Those who will soon be on the program are taken care of but that our young people are weaned off of it. There's simply no reason why my son, who's 19, who gets a summer job and contributes to Social Security, or my daughter, who's 22, who does the same thing, or your kids and your grandkids should be contributing to a program that's been destroyed by the politicians who never set up the trust fund, and yet even today they keep putting out the propaganda that there's a trust fund. Really, what is the bank account number of this trust fund? Where exactly is it over there at the Treasury Department? Where do we find this trust fund? Nowhere. So we need to stop the left from scaring people who are on Social Security and tell you folks, including my parents, relax. Nothing is going to be taken from you. Those people who've also prepared and their future based on social security, relax. But we have to protect your kids and grandkids now. In other words, we bite the bullet for those who are on social security and those who will soon be on social security. But there's no reason when you're dead and gone and I'm dead and gone that our children should be caught up in this impossible maze that they've created. There's no reason for it. 
So if you're covered, and those of you who will soon retire, you're covered, you have nothing to fear. Nothing. But we have to take care of the kids and the grandkids and kids who have yet been born. And you don't do that by increasing the payroll tax, increasing the amount of income on the payroll tax, when the money goes into the general fund for the liberals to run away again with it and spend it on all kinds of hokum. That doesn't work. It just doesn't. The same people who destroyed it will keep destroying it. And the same applies to Medicare. Now, one thing we can do to help Medicare immediately is destroy Obamacare. Because Obamacare takes over 300, uh, excuse me, over 500 billion out of Medicare and takes over 300 billion of that 500 billion and puts it into Medicaid to expand government run healthcare. So that needs to stop. You might say, well, Mark, what's the private sector going to do? This is a remarkable question that I get. The private sector does everything. The government doesn't grow our food. The government doesn't raise our food, livestock. It doesn't transport our food. It doesn't, it doesn't explore for our oil and refine our oil and bring it to us at the pump. The government doesn't make our clothing. Or the government doesn't build our homes, at least not most of us, unless you live in public housing. Most of the things you do in your life, the government doesn't do. The government taxes it and regulates it, but it doesn't create it or promote it. So, this is why, when people say, well, what are we going to do? Let me ask you a question. Milton Friedman asked this question many, many years ago. He wrote a piece for the Cato Institute. Why should a person on AIDS who may have, or a pa- person who has cancer or whatever, severe heart disease, who may have three, four, five, eight years to live, let's say they're in their 30s or 40s, why should they be contributing to Social Security? Why should a person who's about to lose their home because they can't pay their mortgage, even though they have an income, but it's not enough to pay the mortgage, but it is enough to be taxed through Social Security... Why should they be contributing to Social Security rather than husbanding those resources to take care and try and pay for their home? And I can go on and on with a zillion examples of people who need the money now, who aren't thinking about retirement, they're thinking about living today. And I don't mean buying booze and and going to the movies and buying popcorn. I mean surviving today on an income that compels them to pay a certain percentage of that income to Social Security and workman's comp and unemployment when they don't need it now, but they're in trouble now, and they want to spend the money on something else. Well, you'll say, well, Mark, what happens when they retire? Well, they won't be as... How how much worse can it be? than it is for them now when they're struggling. And depending on the family situation, there's a thousand answers to that too. The problem is the folks need the money to survive now. And they can't get it. Or they're never going to see the money because they're going to perish before they retire. Why not allow individuals to have a choice? Oh, you're going to privatize Social Security? This is always the line. Privatize. Ladies and gentlemen, I've already said, those of you on Social Security, those of you who are soon to retire and be on Social Security, or disability or what have you, leave you alone. The promise was made, and you have obviously planned your lives based on those promises, and you've contributed into this program where they've stolen your money. And maybe you would have if you had the 
option would have contributed into a private plan and you would have made more money. And then when you pass away, turn it over to your kids. Pass it on to your kids, which you can't do, obviously, with Social Security. Social Security is a bad deal. Now, those of you who are on it may think it's wonderful, but if you had put your money aside in a different way, in a different place over time, you may have done better and you can pass it on to your kids. Oh, Mark, but the economy sucks. The economy sucks because of what the government's done to it. It's a vicious cycle. But I'm going far afield here. I'm focused on Social Security because you're not allowed to talk about it. Well, we have to talk about it. And by, by the way, Social Security is just illustrative of the other things they do with entitlement, other entitlement programs. Medicaid was meant for poor people. Now we have these states defining poor people as the poverty level plus 400% or 250%. Then their Medicaid funds are going broke. Then they beg the federal taxpayer to bail them out. These are really dark blue liberal states. So we all have to pay more in the Medicaid to bail out states that have decided they want to have a more lucrative Medicaid program. Why? To buy votes. That's why now you and I have to pay for it. Well, that needs to end too, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? We just need to learn more about the Constitution and economics, and private property rights, and individual, not only just individual rights, but individual responsibilities. That's what they do at Hillsdale College. This election was about the Constitution. It was fundamentally about ordinary citizens realizing that their rights, their rights were under attack. 